Hello my soccer universe. Let's have a look around Europe. I will this time look at eight leagues or eight countries and a total of 12 leagues because we in four countries we also look at the lower levels. Um, I'm wearing of course Ajax as we will see they are one of the biggest winners uh, of the past weekend and we are not starting in the Netherlands. We are starting uh, with the league that ended already which is the Premier League. Here are the collected results. We have West Ham winning at Watford 4-1, kind of an interesting result. Uh, Arsenal winning at Burnley 3-1, uh, basically putting pressure on Spurs. Uh, we know Arsenal had a slim chance of overtaking Spurs. Didn't happen. Uh, we'll see at the bottom Spurs played a 2-2 against Everton. Crystal Palace Bournemouth was a crazy game 5-3. New jerseys for Crystal Palace there. So what I uh, opined um, uh, when I talked talk about City win. Some English teams choose to wear uh, their new shirt for the next season. I still don't like it. I think every season should be played with one shirt and one shirt only. So Crystal Palace was one of two teams uh, that played in the new shirts. Newcastle beat Fulham 4-0. Uh, Leicester City, that was the other team that played in their new shirts against Chelsea 0-0. Liverpool, of course, against Wolves 2-0. Manchester United, complete disgrace, uh, loses at home to Cardiff City 2-0. A relegated card, Cardiff City. I'm not sure where Manchester United is going but that will be one of the things to watch for next season. Southampton, Huddersfield 1-1. If you haven't seen it, this was Huddersfield's last game in the Premier League for now. Uh, and as a thank you, the club uh, gave everyone in the away sector at Southampton the wonderful neon yellow Huddersfield away jersey, which I think is a nice gesture. Uh, as I said, Spurs Everton 2-2. I think Spurs took a lead and had to equalize late. And of course, the title was secured by Manchester City with a 4 1 against Brighton, which set up this final table. We have Manchester City one point ahead of Liverpool, 98 and 97. Absolutely amazing totals. Both teams, amazing uh, seasons. Uh, an argument can probably be made that those two teams were the best in Europe this year, uh, and they were pushing each other. The fact that Liverpool with one loss is not champion is staggering. However, there were a little bit too many draws in there. And that is probably what undid Liverpool. Um, and well, probably this was undid Liverpool. The other thing is, of course, the head-to-head -head with many Manchester City. Uh, City won in probably still the best game this year against Liverpool 2-1. And that's the difference. And even if you say Liverpool was unlucky to uh, lose this game, they were lucky to draw at home to City. I want to remind you because City had a penalty and was probably the better team at that uh, stage. Chelsea kind of surprisingly finishes in third with 72 points. Uh, Spurs barely hangs on to the last Champions League spot with 71 points. This actually had huge implications for Austria because with that the win of the Champions League qualifies via the league, which means that Salzburg for the first time is present in the group stage. So that was a game that uh, we that many people in Austria were watching what Spurs gonna do. Uh, it would have been interesting if Arsenal would have snatched that fourth spot and then Tottenham won the Champions League. This would have meant that Salzburg still has to play qualification and my team Lusk would have had a fixed spot in the Europa League. Crazy. Speaking of Europa League, Arsenal is fixed in there. Uh, Manchester United for now has to play qualification, but this now depends on the FA Cup final between City and uh, Watford. If City should get the uh, triple in this case, because they would win all domestic home competitions, United gets a fixed spot in the Europa League. Um, and if Watford should win it, then Watford is fixed in the group stage in the Europa League and United has to play qualification. Um, if uh, City should win the FA Cup, then Wolves will drop into and get the Euro League qualification. Everton 54, Leicester 52, West Ham 52, that's the top half. Watford fell out of this top half. Uh, with not a great run of results, only 50, uh, Crystal Palace 49 and Newcastle 45. 
Bournemouth 45, Burnley 40, Southampton 39, Brighton 36, and the drop. Cardiff 34, Fulham 26, and Huddersfield 16. And you gotta say, uh, Cardiff, if they would have gotten it together, I think they ha uh, lost to Fulham. They would have gotten that win. They would be in there. So Brighton barely makes it. I will not be talking now about the relegation uh, playoffs because I want to do this in a separate video. The first games had an advantage for Villa, who won at home to West Brom. West Brom and uh, Leeds won away to Derby County. So um, we'll talk about this in maybe uh, tomorrow when all this is played and we can look back on that. The only thing I want to say, the Leeds away jerseys were very interesting when playing at Derby County. Let's go to Spain. There's a lot more to talk. Uh, actually, in Spain is also one of those leagues where mm, almost everything is decided. So let's look at the results. Uh, Bilbao against Celta Vigo, 3-1. Um, bad result for Celta, but we, as we threw the, to the, due to the other, other results, Celta will remain most likely in the league. Uh, but there's a slim, slim chance. Atletico Madrid-Sevilla, 1-1. One, one, last game for Griezmann and Godin. Uh, Barcelona makes uh, up slightly uh, with a 2 a nil win over Getafe, which puts Getafe in trouble. Um, Girona Levante, this was, if listen to the Spanish um, football podcast, uh, I can only re re recommend it. It's one of my favorite Monday listens, uh, talking about La Liga. Uh, about half an hour, so it's not even uh, too too long, but really nice, nicely going through all, all the games. And that was the game uh, most important game because it's secured that Levante goes in and more or less, unless some crazy things happen, secures that Girona goes down and they talk a lot, lot about this game. Um, definitely, that seemingly was the game of the weekend. Espanyol, 2 0 against Leganes. Espanyol actually has a shot at the European spot, as we will see. Villarreal Eibar, 1 0. Villarreal is safe. Real Betis against Huesca, 2-1. Uh, Real Sociedad, Real Madrid, 3-1. Real Madrid is really in bad shape. And now another big one, Valencia, 3-1 over Alaves, with being 1-0 down. And when they were 1-0 down, Getafe had had a goal disallowed in Barcelona. If that would have stood, uh, these results, we would now be talking Getafe in the Champions League. But the way this stands now, we will see Valencia is level with Getafe and has the um, advantage over Getafe. And then Real Valladolid safe with a 2-1 win over Rayo, which sets up the table. We know Barcelona champions, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, and here it's interesting, Champions League. Valencia 58 points and Getafe 58 points, but Valencia holds the head-to-head -head in the last um, game of the season. Sevilla 56, probably will only have the Europa League um, it's hard to imagine, and we'll look at uh, next week's games uh, that Valencia will drop out of there. Uh, Europa League qualification is, of course, Bilbao at the moment uh, with 53, and will be like that because we have um, Valencia either gets directly in the Europa League through uh, the league or by winning the cup. And if they win the cup and should qualify for the Champions League, uh, Athletic will, uh, Bilbao will win the, the qualification spot. Um, which is remarkable because they were actually in the relegation zone. Uh, Real Sociedad and Espanyol have also a chance for this last spot. So this race for seventh, that's still interesting. Uh, and we'll look at the game. So it's between uh, Bilbao, Real Sociedad and Espanyol for this last spot that would uh, put them in Europa League qualification. Uh, Real Betis 47 uh, has no chance for anything. Alaves 47, Eibar 46, Leganes 45. We see 43, Levante 43, Villarreal and Levante are not safe. Real Madrid is also safe. Only Celta could potentially fall out of it. However, uh, they need a big goal swing, um, they could draw level and then a lot of goals made up, it's not gonna happen. Um, I think, having said that, yeah, there is not a head-to-head, -head, it's just uh, Valencia has the slightly better goal differential, by one goal and more goals scored. So, we'll see, Girona, as I said, is more or less down, uh, Rayo Vallecano and Uesca also. Let's look at the last match day. Um, Again, we have Girona has to win at Alaves, which 
Otherwise, he's not that great uh, at the time, but still. And Celta plays at home to Rayo, so it's hard to see that where this goal swing is coming. So the Celta loses home to Rayo and Girona wins at Alaves. If you now look for the battle for um, the seventh spot, we have a head to head between Espanyol and Real Sociedad. So the winner can, cha uh, can challenge uh, Bilbao, and Bilbao has to play at Sevilla. So if that goes the right way, uh, it is not inconceivable. Um, that Espanyol goes in. We just need actually one goal, one uh, goal wins and losses in this case because Espanyol has scored more uh, goals than Bilbao. Uh, yeah, so this is where uh, things. This is the how how the last round will look like. Um, note that only the games that really have an influence on each other play at the same time otherwise La Liga is again spaced out not like on the last match where everything was played at the same time as it should if we look at the chances here uh, who will make it to the Champions League Valencia 62%, Getafe 36%, Sevilla only an outside chance at, at 2%. Unfortunately, uh, 538 does not show how it will end in, in the battle for 7th but they have will bow slightly ahead of Espanyol Real Sociedad because they project them to play out a draw. Uh, and as for the drop, we see Girona uh, is more or less down. I mean, it needs to be a huge swing. Let's also quickly check who is projected to come up from uh, the Segunda División. We have four more match days. So uh, in this case, we have two promotion spots and four promotion playoff spots. So that is definitely uh, something to watch. So Osasuna is more or less uh, securely promoted. They have a clear advantage, 74 points uh, over Albacete in third spot, which is 68. So they are more or less promoted and similar for Granada. Uh, for the playoffs, Mallorca uh, looks best. Albacete still has a decent chance to overtake Granada. Uh, that's why their chances of making the playoffs are not that high. Um, who else has a chance? Mallorca, Malaga, Cadiz and La Coruña. So uh, one, two, three, four, five. One of these will not, most likely not make it. Uh, Gijón, Oviedo and Almeria only outside chances. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. There are a few big names in there. Mallorca, Malaga and Deportivo. Those have all made some noise as this well. And also soon as also a team that's frequently in the uh, Primera División. Italy. Another one with crazy races, and this time it's uh, there's a race for seventh, there's a race for fourth, and the one for fourth, of course, involves a lot of big name teams. We had the and talked about it the win of At Atalanta over Genoa 2 1, Lazio wins at Cagliari 2 1, and Milan uh, gets a win at Fiorentina, which basically doesn't change positions too much. Torino keeps uh, winning, gets uh, to winning ways again, 3-2 against Sassuolo. Frosinone Udine won 3, very important uh, win for Udine. Sampdoria Empoli 2-1, I did not really expect it, but Empoli is not letting go. It might well be that Empoli, who looked actually like a secure team to be relegated, that they might get this um, uh, the results to stay in Serie A. So Udine and Empoli are very close as we will see. Napoli wins at Spal 2-1 and then Roma, Juve, Roma gets a really important 2-0 win which also keeps them in contention for this fourth spot. Bologna more or less secures the survival at the 4-1 over Parma and Inter makes a little bit of hard work, hard, hard work necessary to beat Akevo 2-0 which basically will mean that they have a good chance of uh, getting into the Champions League. If you look at the table here uh, Juve uh, champions, Napoli secure in second spot, Inter now 66, Atalanta 65. Those are the front runners, and I wouldn't be surprised if the table ends exactly like that. Uh, Milan three points behind. The big thing we will talk about is the next round when Atalanta has to play at Juventus. Roma also 62 points. Note Milan has the head to head over Atalanta and over Roma, and in Serie A, the head to head is what counts. Um, 
outside outside chances to make it in the Champions League for Torino Lazio cannot make it and it also depends on the cup final which is played tomorrow uh, the cup winner plays in the Europa League for sure should that be Lazio then uh, Torino has to make it in the sixth spot should it be Atalanta then uh, the sixth place team goes directly in group stage and the seventh place team has to play qualification uh, those are the eight teams that we're actually talking about that can make it to Europe. Sampdoria, Sassolo are out, but then it's crazy in the relegation zone. We have Sassolo 42, Spal 42, Cagliari 40, Bologna 40, Fiorentina 40. I mean, all those 40 point teams are just five points ahead of relegation. Seemingly safe, but not quite. Parma 38. Parma is taking a worrisome downturn. Udine is battling like crazy, Genoa is battling like crazy, uh, 36 points, and Empoli is having a run that can really, um, is really scaring, namely Parma, Udine and Genoa, Empoli 35, Rosinone and Kiewa are already down. Let's look at the remaining program of uh, these teams. Let's first look for uh, the battle to go up. We have uh, Milan, Frosinone. Juve Atalanta, so this is a huge one, and then uh, Roma is playing at Sassuolo, which is also a must-win game for them, this is already on Saturday. Uh, Torino has to play Empoli, so both teams are playing for something, it's more or less a must-win for Empoli, whereas Lazio plays on Monday against Bologna, so it uh, will be interesting to see that whether Lazio still has to play uh, for something. Unen Spal looms large, Genoa Cagliari uh, looms also large, um, Parma Fiorentina, if Fiorentina da, da, does, doesn't get a point, Fiorentina is in trouble, but Parma also needs that win. And on the last day of the season, we have, uh, when all um, games are played at the same time, uh, again let's, let's look at the top spots, uh, we have at, uh, Inter has to play Empoli, so if Inter, they have a big game at Napoli uh, next week, should Inter lose that one, they could be potentially in trouble, and then Empoli has to fight for the points, so this is an interesting matchup right there. Um, we also have, uh, so Inter Empoli, we have Atalanta at, Sassu uh, at home to Sassuolo, but playing in the home stadium of Sassuolo because of construction, which is kind of a um, weird uh, thing happening there. Uh, we also have Spal against Milan, so that would be an important win for Milan, and Roma Parma. So the, everything is kind of together. The only, t the only match matchup that is not entangled in those fights is Udine at Cagliari, but also don't underestimate Torino Lazio. If there's still something to play for, this could be a direct um, fight for this last European spot. So Italy definitely looks interesting. Uh, and when you look at this for, uh, last uh, Champions League spot, we see that Inter 94% really looks safe. Atalanta 79%. As I said, I would not be surprised if Atalanta pulls this off. Roma 7%, Milan 18%. The Milan fan in me is really hoping that Juventus is doing something, um, especially since they want to celebrate the championship that evening. Uh, so I really hope they want to do this with, with a win. But Atalanta has been hurting Juventus this season already twice. Uh, once in the cup when they unceremoniously dumped the Juve out of the competition. But Atalanta also has to play a cup final uh, Wednesday evening. As for relegation, Empoli is still the odds-on favorite, but Genoa 13%, Udine 6%, Parma 2%. They are still not quite looking safe. As for who's coming up, and Italy is actually has a crazy system. Um, don't be fooled with these numbers. Palermo got the ruling that no, they're not going to promotional playoffs. They are relegated, which changes the whole situation here. Brescia and Lecce will come up and then there is the play of Benevento, Pescara, Verona, Cittadella, Spezia and Perugia. And in Italy it's even crazier. They uh, have more or less a quarterfinal, then a semifinal and then a final for this last promotion spot. So to make it extra complicated. Um, it seems to be Benevento's, when I look at it, Palermo drops out uh, of it completely. But uh, it will be interesting to see how these playoffs are going. Germany, 
second to last round and almost everything uh, decided uh, except for who's placed in the Champions League, as we will see. Wolfsburg gets a huge win, 3-0 over Wolfsburg, basically securing their promotion, uh, their relegation playoff spot. Schalke, Leverkusen 1-1 is actually, uh, was a bad result for Le Leverkusen and a good result for Schalke to secure something, uh, but they were already safe. But as we'll see, the Leverkusen uh, result was overall not that bad. Dortmund, Düsseldorf 3-2. Gladbach sends down Nuremberg with a score that was way too high, 4 0. Augsburg, Hertha, 3 4, crazy game. Augsburg had three times the lead. Hertha gets a last minute winner. Hannover, Freiburg, 3 0. Not enough for Hannover, also relegated. And Bayern didn't get the win at Leipzig that would have secured the championship because of a little toe, more or less. Uh, the offside of Lewandowski, one of the most controversial calls. That's where I really don't get it. I think we not only need to look at handball, we also need to look at the offside rule. That to me didn't look offside uh, if you see the screenshot. And I think Bayern for once is right to complain. Bremen, Hoffenheim 1-0 and then Frankfurt loses at home to Mainz 2-0. Which puts Frankfurt in serious trouble. Because when we look at the table now, so Bayern, Dortmund, two points difference. Bayern plays at home to Frankfurt. Dortmund away to Gladbach. So, two not easy tasks, but you would think that Bayern will get this done and Dortmund will have a little bit trouble. Leipzig is in the Champions League again at 66 points and then the battle for fourth spots. And there are four teams involved. Gladbach 55, just over Leverkusen 55. So, it really will depend on goal differential there. Frankfurt doesn't have it in their own hand and might actually even lose uh, the European spots because Wolfsburg uh, could overtake them and Hoffenheim is also st uh, still there. If Hoffenheim, Frankfurt loses, Hoffenheim wins, Frankfurt drops all the way to 8th and they were just 4th. So um, this Europa League campaign, as exciting as it was for Frankfurt, might cost them dearly in the league. Uh, Bremen out of it 50, Hertha 43, Düsseldorf 41, pretty strong. Mainz 40, Freiburg 33, Augsburg 32, Schalke 32, and then, as we said, uh, Stuttgart is in the relegation playoff, uh, Hannover 21, Nuremberg 19. The last uh, day of the season, will, as we already said, Gladbach Dortmund, we have Wolfsburg Augsburg, so it is not that hard. Um, to get that win, uh, Bayern Frankfurt, Schalke Stuttgart, uh, nothing to play for, Düsseldorf Hannover, also nothing to play for, Hertha against Leverkusen, all to play for Lever Leverkusen, and all the remaining games. There is Hoffenheim at Mainz, that's a local derby that could also mean something. Now, for the playoff, um, I'll look first at probabilities. Um, Leverkusen 47%, Gladbach 51%, Frankfurt only 2% left. So that doesn't look good. Um, Stuttgart, as you see, has a 28% chance of being relegated, and that's because of the opposition in the playoff. We have Köln already up, Paderborn took a huge step, and HSV uh, Hamburg is more or less out, out of it. So it's most likely that Union Berlin is playing against Stuttgart, and there you would favor Stuttgart, of course. Absolute disaster for Hamburg. They looked so safe um, even a month ago and it's going all the way down. But I'm happy that Köln is back. Quickly, France. Uh, Montpellier beats Saint-Étienne. Huge result for Europe. PSG gets a win again at Angers 2-1. Amiens to lose 0-0. Caron Reims 3-2. We'll look at the implication of that too. Dijon Strasbourg 2-1. Uh, nice Nantes 1-1. Nîmes Monaco. 1-0, Rennes, Guingamp, <laughs> Breton, Derby, 1-1, Lille, Bordeaux, 1-0, and Lyon beats up on Marseille, 3-0, which doesn't bode well for Marseille. So let's look at the table. Uh, we know PSG top, Lille will be second, Lyon will be third. There's almost nothing that can happen if you look just at the goal differential. Um, Saint-Étienne with that loss will probably not catch um, will not catch uh, Lyon anymore as well, although there are still two rounds uh, to play, so it is not impossible. Uh, Montpellier out of it, Marseille out of it, so is Nice. 
Um, note that Rennes has won the Coupe de France, so they are in the Europa League already. Um, and it doesn't matter that they are in 12th spot. Bordeaux pretty much disappointing at 38 points. Monaco could still be relegated now. So Monaco that looked safe. If you look at the bottom, Caen 33 points, Monaco 33 points, and there's only one goal difference. Dijon is also still in there. Gangon probably will go down. So um, Monaco in danger, Amiens in danger, I would say to lose is safe. Let's look um, at what 538 is saying in this case. Um, Amiens 4%, Monaco 8%, Caen 37%, Dijon 85% cow, only 37% again because of a relegation playoff. What's the uh, next matches? We have uh, match day 37. Let's look just at relegation. I mean, Saint Etienne plays against Nice, and uh, we have Lyon playing against Cow. So um, you would think that Lyon secures their uh, third spot there. Cow, this game at Lyon will hurt them. Monaco uh, plays at home to Amiens, that becomes a huge matchup right there. Uh, and Dijon plays at PSG, so um, they are not looking too happy with that uh, there as well. So I, I say this is an advantage. Whoever from Monaco, Amiens, whoever wins there, if there is a winner, they will have, have an advantage. In the last round, uh, we have Dijon at home to uh, Toulouse, that could be a win. Nice plays Monaco, that's a local derby where Nice is probably looking uh, for a win. Um, Amiens, Guingamp, must win for Guingamp, um, looking for a cow, Bordeaux. I think those probabilities are, are probably all right. I think we won't see much change, but you know, it's not easy for Monaco at all. As of who is come, coming up, we have Metz and Brest are already coming up, and then there will be uh, relegation playoffs um, where the spot at the moment is taken by Troyes, although Paris has a chance, Lance a small one, Lorient also. Um, part of me would like to see uh, Paris FC, but you know, we have already won huge team from Paris, but it would be interesting to have a Paris derby because that's something we haven't seen in a long, long time. Now, Netherlands. Big result. We're going to go now a little bit faster. Ajax beats Utrecht 4-1. Alkma beats PSV all the way on the bottom 1-0. The teams were level with Ajax having the uh, better goal differential. And that means now there's a three goal difference uh, of three point difference and 14 goals for Ajax. Mathematically, it's still possible that there's a uh, that PSV could win it, but it means a 14 goal swing and a loss for Ajax. So, Ajax are champions. Feyenoord more or less has the Europa League uh, group phase guaranteed, has the Europa League group phase uh, guaranteed, and then there's some players for further European spots. Um, the last match day will which happen on Wednesday. Ajax just more or less needs a point at the craft shop or hoping, hoping that PSV doesn't win huge at uh, Ericles. So I think we can congratulate Ajax are the new Dutch champions, which is basically a, a makeup for this horrible loss that they had to Spurs on the weekend. Uh, Portugal, also interesting uh, race where we had uh, Benfica winning 3-2 at Rio Ave and Porto 4-0 at Nacional. So the table on top doesn't change much. We still have Benfica 84, Porto 82, so two points ahead for Benfica. Probably will be Benfica. We have one more round to play, which will be... Um, we have Benfica playing at home to Santa Clara and Porto against Sporting, so it looks all Benfica. I mean, um, Sporting probably will not uh, make much opposition, but if I just look, the Benfica has to play Santa Clara, which I are in eighth spot, but um, have half the points of Benfica, so I don't think there will be much happening. 
Now the last league I want to look into was one that's uh, not too long ago. Those didn't seem uh, uh, that it could be uh, come exciting, but it's gonna be. It is the Turkish Super League, uh, where last weekend Bajakshi here played only a draw, which allowed uh, Galatasaray to draw level. Now this weekend Galatasaray played at Rizespor, had a 1-0 lead, um, were two down and scored two goals in added time to get a win. And then Bajakshi here beats Ankara 2-1, so the two teams at the moment are level. Uh, with Galatasaray holding the better goal differential. So that came a little bit out of nowhere. So two Istanbul teams, 66 for Galatasaray, uh, Bajakshi here 66, we have Bajikas at 62, potentially could get in there, um, realistically not, Trabzon of course will not. Why am I saying this? Because we have the head-to-head -head on the upcoming weekend, Sunday at 6 o'clock Galatasaray against Bajakshi here at Galatasaray, where Galatasaray could make a huge step towards the title. If this ends in a draw and Bajikas beats uh, Trabzon Spor, which is third against fourth, so a huge uh, week, week in Turkey, maybe Bajikas could get in there, because uh, they would then be two points behind Galatasaray or Bajakshi here as well. Uh, still very unlikely. Last day uh, Galatasaray has to go to Sivaspor, Bajikas at Kasim Pasa, and Bajakshi has to home at Alanya Spor. So basically the game next week decides who will be the Turkish champion. Uh, chances 71% for Galatasaray, Bajakshi at 28%, Bajikas has a 1% chance because uh, then a lot needs to go in their favor. Uh, Bajikas also has only a 17% chance to qualify for the uh, Champions League spots uh, with Galatasaray and Bajakshi here at 95 and 88%. So those are the clear front runners. So will it be this supposed fairy tale story? Although I don't think it really is one in Turkey. We shall see. Or will it be again Galatasaray pulling off the win? This ends our long journey through Europe. Lots to talk about there. Um, let me know anything that I missed or should have made better. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.